What's good, everybody? You are checking out an all new wrestling with the topics. Lee and the beautiful and the lovely Mrs. Sanders. It's the Sanders with you guys. Appreciate you guys that's checking out this episode. We haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks. It's been a little bit busy. I know we definitely owed you guys a show covering our experience on the Jericho cruise, but with Wifey's blessing, she felt I did a pretty good job doing the reviews, not just for the written up piece, but from also what she had saw of the live stream edition that I had did covering it. And I appreciate everybody that had went out of their way checking that out as it was awesome. It was awesome. And it's funny that I'm talking about the Chris Jericho cruise because I didn't even plan on opening up the show about <laughs> Jericho cruise and all that. But there is some very interesting Jericho news in regards to the cruise. Mm -hmm. At least I found interesting that we can get into a little bit in a little bit but yeah guys we are definitely we were talking about it earlier today and we're definitely going to be making a conscious effort to give you guys more episodes of wrestling with the topic says 2022 is literally right around the corner and it's really hard to believe this i know tams didn't believe it but this particular series of wrestling with the topics turns out has about seven years under its belt as this series was first launched in 2014 believe it or not guys 2014 is when this series was launched and the only reason why i even know this is because <laughs> i always it's a nasty habit teach its own but if you're like me then you know exactly where i'm coming from but i save all my emails Every single email, because I never know when I need to go back and retrieve something. So, for instance, whether it's a case where I did an interview with somebody and they pretty much were like, yeah, definitely stay in contact. Let's chat from time to time. Or it's a case of, oh, I remember when I hired this freelancer, they did such a good job for me. And I've done that off and on over the years. There's other instances. And, and you know what? You get the examples. For instance, though, I just talked about freelancers an old graphic artist that we used to love using a guy by the name of Andy Rocketeer hmm. made phenomenal artwork for the show. Some of the logos that you see we use for the shows are still intact this very day as a matter of fact when you go and you look at the 10th anniversary logo for the rcwr show that i use for that 10th anniversary special by the way if you didn't get a chance to check out that 10th anniversary special please do so after you get done checking out this episode as it's only available on youtube only available on youtube and the reason why in a nutshell when we opened up the phone lines, some of the people that were calling in and I'm not bashing them because we pretty much had already not settled, but we pretty much going forward. It's a it's a collective conscious effort on my part and on the listeners parts that decide they want to call into the show together. We need to tighten up better when we open up the phone lines. But we had people that were calling into the show that were monitoring themselves from the initial stream that they were watching my show from. So whatever device they were pushing and then they had their cell phone. So as they're talking, I, it was just creating this endless loop. And mm -hmm. so you, we had that. And then I was quite taken back by the number of people that actually had tried to call into the show to wish me a happy 10th anniversary, but they weren't able to get through. I had like about at least seven different calls that we're trying to get in and they weren't able to get in because we had the same two people that kept trying to call into the show. Mm -hmm. And one of the listeners I had already spoken to at great length, but something weird was going on with his connection as there was these long dead pauses. And it's like, what the hell is going on? So why am I bringing all of this up as it sounds a little long winded? It made the editing process for the audio a bitch and i'm like this my time is precious as it is okay 
especially when I got to do short turnarounds and I got to go to work the next day and heaven forbid on top of work, I also got to somehow squeeze in time to prepare for another show. And so for me, I didn't want to deal with that headache of editing that episode. So the webcast version of the 10th anniversary special, you're only going to be able to find it on YouTube. Could I edit the audio? Yeah, I could, but it's very tedious. I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not touching it. So it's kind of one of those. Maybe when he has a free moment way later down the line, maybe. Nah, but I have a golden rule. I I have a golden rule. If I don't edit something within maximum three days Mm -hmm. so I can get it out there to the listeners. I don't bother. And I'm proud to say that over the years, over the years, unless an episode I felt wasn't to my standards, I I don't release it. And the last time I ever did something like that, where no, this is not even up to the standards that I expect for the show to have. I'm cutting this. That hasn't happened for about four years. Mm. I remember I was live on air and just there was something off with my whole aura and the way I went about the shows. The one time in live show history where I can't do this and I just abruptly ended the show. I was probably like about 10 minutes into the show Hmm. and I just said, I'm sorry guys. I said, but you guys, I know expect a certain level. I'm not bringing you that level tonight. It was definitely one of those nights where I really should have taken the night off, but I was forcing myself to do it anyway, to do the show anyway. And in those 10 minutes, it was okay. Yeah, I'm not doing it. And so that was the last time I said, yeah, I'm not. But typically my rule of thumb is unless I'm getting the show out from the moment I've done it live, I've initially streamed it live and all that good stuff. If I'm not releasing it within three days, I'm not even going to bother. And for me, I like doing exclusive things Mm -hmm. from time to time. That's the other reason why I'm not doing it, too, is because Mm -hmm. I like the idea of, oh, hey, did you check out? No, where is that? Well, the only place you're going to be able to check it out is actually over here. I like doing that from time Mm -hmm. to time, you know, create those incentives for, yeah, you should definitely be paying attention to this respected outlet over here because you don't know what type of exclusive content is going to be happening right here. So that's the other reason, the other reason why it's kind of 50, 50, honestly, Hmm. 50%. I wanted something exclusive just for YouTube Mm -hmm. because when it's all said and done, I mean, yeah, you can make the argument that no, essentially the show really began as a a phone podcast going back to our blog talk radio Mm -hmm. days. And then just a couple of months after that, we went right into YouTube. Mm -hmm. And doing the webcast shows and all of that. But Mm -hmm. I just felt that nah, for this occasion, it was like, nah, I really like the fact that the people are able to see me. They're able to see how appreciative I am of them for always checking out my stuff over the years as compared to just the audio. Mm -hmm. You from coming from? I do. But the original plan was to release the audio. But mm-hmm. we had all those hiccups and it was like, yeah, yeah I'm good. So, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. how all of that. Okay. Yeah, that's how all, all that had pretty much came about. But getting back to wrestling with the topics, I only know that the show's been around since 2014 because, again, Andy Rocketeer, he's done all the logos uh, that you guys have been seeing. Most of the logos that you see for it and the 10th anniversary logo is something that he worked for, uh, he, he did for me years back. And there's a fun story to it. I did not get a chance to tell this story during the stream. It's not a long-winded story, but he designed two logos for the RCWR show. Actually, three. He did three unique versions. And the one version that I use, you guys will know this logo from time to time. It's a circular blue and white version and then he 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 did that andy rocketeer did that and then there was another design that he did where it's just the traditional kind of blue diamond like rcwr show logo he actually did that one as well if i'm not mistaken 
But there was the one I used for the 10th anniversary special where he says to me, I made you this version. I know it's a radical change from what you've used over the years so far. Maybe consider using this as an exclusive shirt or wait for it. Wait for it. His words, not mine. When you've hit your 10th anniversary. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so that logo made its official debut. Uh, for that 10th anniversary show. For that 10th show. anniversary show. Yeah. So, Interesting. So I would highly encourage you to, if you don't know how the logo looks yet, you didn't check out the 10th anniversary special, go on the YouTube channel and you can actually see the thumbnail. If you're following me on Twitter at the RCWR show, just read some of my recent Twitter uh, Twitter uh, post, check out my timeline and you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's a pretty badass logo. It's a pretty badass logo. It's got a nice it gold, is. Uh, it is gold very nice. red, uh, kind of like a nice torn shredded flag at the bottom and all that. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's a badass logo, mm -hmm. badass logo. Uh, Andy, honestly, Andy was my go-to my number one for many years, but I don't know what's going on with Andy. Sometimes over the years, I would just check in with him just to find out if he was doing OK. I wouldn't want anything from him. I would just reach out to him, see what's hanging and everything. And at first, over the years, Andy was the type of person he would get back to you in a day or so. And then it would be a week later. And then finally, it was just at the latest, it would be a week later. But then just didn't hear a peep from Andy and Andy is just hell of a hell of a good guy hell of a great artist and everything but I hope he's doing all right because it just seemed more and more he was just becoming disconnected even to paying customers that mm -hmm. were because there were a couple of times over the years I said hey Andy hey dog I am interested in knowing if you'd be down for uh, a collaboration i got some interesting ideas for some designs and make no mistake about it folks andy is an artist you gotta pay for he don't do no freebies i mean he really gotta be fucking with you like that to be doing a freebie and he used to do freebies for me but it got to a point where i just insisted you know what man for what you're doing for me i want to pay you and we came to a a mutual mm -hmm. agreement and everything but even when i was hitting up andy in the previous years letting him know hey yeah i got this thing in mind i want to commission you i didn't hear a peep so i, I mm -hmm. hope he's okay and i'm not the only yeah. one that's had that experience there's no. there's many other in the podcasting family that yeah what is going on with andy is he all right so mm. hopefully he's okay yeah that's i remember us having a conversation about the fact that <clears throat> you couldn't get a hold of him yeah yeah um yes. but yeah much you know hope everything is good and you know you're continuing to to live life yeah exactly so yeah but um um i was mentioning all of that for a main reason in regards to uh oh yeah wrestling with the topics is what i was talking about sorry see how it goes we just we blend into it's all connected though there's a main reason why it may sound like we're going on and on but there's a main reason why so Andy designed the Wrestling with the Topics logo. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was looking at the emails over the weekend because I was looking for that limited edition RCWR show logo. And I accidentally bumped into the Wrestling with the Topics logo. And I saw the email exchanges that we had. And I saw that that was from 2014 when he designed the logo and i said holy shit the series has been around that long because it feels to me like it's only been around since 2017 but it was actually 2014 mm -hmm. yeah i was thinking more like five years but yeah so wow. uh, yeah that series though or this series wrestling with the topics we're already planning ahead to the uh first quarter of 2022 and that series is going to be uh a freebie you know, the way we're going to finish out the rest of this year, we're going to basically do two free episodes for you guys and then two Patreon wall episodes. Because this series initially started off exclusively as a Patreon series 
but I would say probably, if not last year, maybe the year before we started doing, you know, every couple of months, we just started doing special little one-off episodes as freebies. But most of all, our whole archive of the shows is behind the Patreon wall. But coming in 2022, it's going to be a regular, we can do weekly, great worst case scenario, a bi-weekly series for you guys. Now, obviously, by doing that, as you mentioned, Tams, we got to replace because we're pulling from Patreon. Obviously, we got to replace and there's already some cool stuff that's in the works. I'll tell you more about it when we actually get into December. So but you, you guys are definitely going to love it. Hope you guys have been having a fantastic weekend or uh, week so far. I'm already thinking about the weekend personally because <laughs> I got a little bit of a hectic work schedule coming up for next week going into Thanksgiving. Boss asked me if I can help out actually on Wednesday and Wednesday is usually my days off. So I usually like to kick back, do the NWA show, work on some editing and things of that nature, but doing that turnaround, but I'm balancing it out in my head. I'm going, you know, okay, y- you're not working Thanksgiving, so it's not that bad, but mm-hmm. you know, it, it just, yeah, me personally, I don't want to deal with all that bullshit, but it is what it is, you know, got to make that money somehow. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been kind of interesting what's been going on the, uh, this week so far. Good things, nothing but good things, but I hope you guys have been doing okay so far. And if not, just hang in there for those of you, unless you have other plans and the weekends near, just, just hang in there, man. Just hang in there. We, we all got to get through those hurdles somehow now i talked about jericho we're talking about that cruise there i read just now that apparently he made no money whatsoever on the very first jericho cruise and i just was like wait what are you are you serious and (laughs) he talked about this on his talk is jericho podcast And he revealed that he actually lost, believe it or not, six figures on his first cruise. And he noted that he wanted NXT to be a part of it when he first came up with the idea as far back as 2015. But WWE ended up passing on the idea. So, yeah, keep in mind that as far as because I know there's this narrative that's out there. Where some folks feel that, oh, Jericho is doing this cruise thing. It's an exclusive AEW. No, Jericho, while he was still under the WWE, he pitched this whole cruise thing and it pretty much went in one ear and And then out out the the other. other. And then once he was out of it and he just was thinking on a much grander scale, how, okay, be kind of cool if we were able to do this wrestling cruise where we could get wrestlers from various promotions under one umbrella and it's like the only place where you can see them but wwe yeah nah nah we're good thanks and it's kind of like what the hell that that just to me that makes no sense yeah you have you know as far back as even for me um because <clears throat> <laughs> this is actually a funny story. So when Lee and I first got started talking, started dating, so on and so forth. And I, at that point, was doing different cruises. Um, you know, I did an Elvis cruise once, actually a few few times. Um, I did another themed cruise and they were a blast had a great time so i come home um from the last cruise themed themed cruise that i went on and i was just so you know it was wonderful everything was great you know let's go do it again but now i want my boyfriend to come with me yeah, let's let's do the next cruise, da, 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 you know, and and talking it up, and <laughs> and he was like, no. What do you mean no? No, I'm not 
getting on no boat. I'm not getting on no plane. No. Hmm. Wonder what plane I can drop him out of. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so over the years, we, we, you know, talk about it, ponder over it. I'm like, okay. So first of all, if I do a cruise, it has to be something that he's interested in. Has to be. Okay. So in reference to all that and, in you know, you have cruises, you have so many themed cruises. Wrestling is such a con- conglomerate. Why wouldn't that be a good idea? I'll tell you the reason why. And you almost lost me there because I'm like, I know she's, yeah, I know she's like, where, where is she going with this? I'll tell you the reason why. It is because WWE, which is a financial juggernaut, it is a institution when it comes to the people that ultimately are at the helm, they pretty much are. No, I am the big kid in the sandbox and, and I don't want to do it. And these wrestlers, these are my toys and I'm not interested in giving you these toys. No, you know, mm-hmm. you know, if anything, why should I even do something like that? Even if you were to give me part of the money and all of that, why should I do something like that? When I can pretty much do my own themed cruise or own WWE themed and keep it in house, those are ultimately oh, those so are ultimately they were not possibly interested. But that comes to a different, interesting question. So first of all, it seems like they weren't interested in reference to. I'm only okay, speculating, I'm not, right? speculation okay well i'm not trying to share my money with you and you're not supposed to be the marquee person for this cruise if i'm going to do a cruise it's going to be wwe and it's going to be no 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 from what i've learned over the years just paying attention to shoot interviews uh wrestlers doing interviews and the whole nine yards Vince McMahon comes off as one of those type of people. You may have a really damn good idea, an idea that is just so fucking golden. You're going to be able to make plenty of fucking money for him and for the WWE. But the one thing that Vince McMahon is like, eh, is... He loves it when he is the one that comes up with those ideas. He is the one that has to, okay, this is what we're going to do. He may talk a good game and say, hey, love that creative feedback, love that input, yada, 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 yada. But when he is feeling a certain way as far as, yeah, no, I'm not interested in doing that. It is basically final. Now, granted, in the later years, Vince McMahon has loosened up quite a bit. For example, when Jericho, who was no longer under contract with the WWE, when he did that first New Japan Pro Wrestling match with Kenny Omega, and he basically wanted Vince McMahon's blessing, even though he was no longer under contract, Vince McMahon you know, he had the he had the hindsight to, oh, man, that's going to have a lot of people talking. This is a really good thing. Yeah, do it. Do it. I mean, you're essentially representing WWE. As far as Vince McMahon was concerned, even though Jericho was no longer with the WWE, he was in his eyes a WWE lifer. So he's like, no, no, go do it. You're, you'd be a good representation of us and everything. Yeah, do it. And then when ultimately everything led up to Jericho going to AEW. That's where Vince started to get kind of soured and, and and pretty much, okay, so you're no longer my boy. I see how it is. Okay, whatever. And, you know, got little butt hurt feelings or whatever. And mm-hmm. and, and that's sure. pretty and that's pretty much it. So Jericho comes up with the blueprint for this cruise, and it's pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Now we're 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 not interested. Right. He's like, yeah, but it's this really cool cruise where wrestlers from various promotions, they can just come to this joint, you know, and and it's all about just entertaining the fans, having a good time and yada, 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 yada. No less different than when Mickey James 
pitch to Vince McMahon and crew, hey, how about an all women's pay-per-view? How about, you know, we do something, you know, somewhat on the regular uh, for the women and everything. And she met so many fucking dead ends that it was just and so it, much resistance. Right, it was mind boggling. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted to push on to her. Oh, we want you to be a coach. We want you to be in the back. We want you to be a producer. Mickey James is like, OK, I hear you. I think I would be pretty good at that when I'm ready to hang up the boots. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to hang up the boots just yet. So instead, you know, why don't we do this for the women? Why don't we do this? How about that? You know, she is mm-hmm. given all of this creative feedback and Vince McMahon and crew are pretty much like, yeah, no, there's no money in that. It's not profitable. Fans don't care to see that. And then look at what mm-hmm. she was able to go do with the NWA mm-hmm. with the Empower event mm-hmm. and just all the great women. I just talked about it yesterday. They just... NWA, that is, they just inked a deal with WWE Hall of Famer Medusa, who's going to be working in a backstage producing capacity with the NWA. And she's going to be doing some more stuff behind the scenes. So what a great one two punch that is for your women's division in NWA. Mm -hmm. You got Medusa and you got Mickey James. You can't go wrong right there. So to the point, WWE, Vince McMahon and certain people around him, they just come off so, yeah, we're, 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 no, we're not, we're not, we're not doing that because, you know, it's not really feasible for us. We feel it's really not about us. We're not able to maximize on profit and all this, whatever bullshit they may say they care about the WWE universe. They care about the WWE fans. But in instances like that, it, it's honestly, it, it, honestly, it's a crock of shit for what it's worth. Another good example. I remember when CM Punk was with the WWE. I'll say this and I, I want to get back to the main, the main point here. CM Punk, big fan of The Walking Dead. And there was an opportunity for him while he was with the WWE. I remember this. There was an opportunity for him to do some stuff with The Walking Dead. And, you know, he was like, look, you know, these guys, they're very interested. You know, they've actually been checking out my work here in WWE for a couple of years. And and they actually think I'd be pretty cool uh, to be on an episode of Walking Dead based on my knowledge and how I look and everything. And ultimately, WWE was like, yeah, no. And there were other instances where CM Punk was strongly considered for some role. And the powers that be in WWE, rather than them say, oh, OK, yeah, well, sure. Let's go ahead. Let's do this. They go. Now, we we don't think he'd be right for the role. Instead, we want you to take this guy instead. You know, so it's <laughs> it's one of those. Yeah, it's just right. But Jericho about that whole losing money on the uh, first cruise and all that. I got a nice quote right here. Again, this is from his podcast, quote unquote, huge success. From a critic standpoint, huge failure from a financial standpoint. I lost a lot of money, six figures, but you're building your business, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you build something, you have to be prepared to spend money to make money. That's what we did. I lost a lot of money and we put hours and hours of work into it. And I did something I said I would never do, which is become a promoter. I'm in charge of booking all the talent and paying the talent, especially the first cruise. I paid all the talent. It's not easy because everyone wants to get a great payoff. And I also want everyone to get a great payoff. But I'm also going over what my budget is. Mm -hmm. The second cruise, the financial deal was reconfigured to where I recouped my loss and made money on top of that. And here's something that many of you guys may have noticed that we're looking at this cruise, thinking about going on it, or you were just kind of maybe wondering after the fact, yo, how come we didn't do anything with dynamite on the cruise? Well, he talked about that as far as dynamite on the cruise for this year. We never know what we're going to get with AEW until we're closer to the cruise. The crazy thing with this one was that in August or July, 
TNT told us Dynamite would be preempted and moved to a Saturday. Originally, we thought it was great because we could do Dynamite live from the sea because that was our plan originally. Hmm. The first one was taped, but the second one, we were thinking of how we could do it live being in port at the Grand Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that AEW decided to go in a different direction and doing it live just wasn't as feasible as we thought. When Dynamite got moved to Saturday, it meant it would conflict with the crews. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Interesting, you know, because I know we personally had a conversation about some of the extras that were on the cruise mm-hmm. that were financially another thing out of pocket. Mm-hmm. And I you know, I remember Lee saying, it's like, dang, you know, I respect the hustle, but I, that doesn't mean I have to like the game. Right. And, but you can kind of understand in reference to his perspectives on what he's got coming out, mm-hmm. what he's preparing for, because with a cruise and it's white hot and you still want to make sure that you're making it fun, interactive, something they're going to want to pay to come back to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the funny play on words, but actually see with your eyes and not see on the ocean. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very, you know, yeah. it actually gives me a little bit more of a newfound respect for him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. For sure. Definitely. For sure. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was willing to follow this vision dream and vision to its fruition to where it's now putting money in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially something as kind of a 10 year thing. As I've always told Lee, I said, you know, your first little bit in podcasting is going to be rough. You're still finding yourself. You're still figuring out what works, what doesn't. And and so many other things. But once you have that feel, once you have that camaraderie with the audience and and what have you, you know, it's going to be great. And I remember specifically <laughs> our conversation. You had just come home from work and you said... I think I want to go into podcasting. And I said, really? Okay. And I said, and I quote, stick with it. And you took those words to heart. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are 10 years later. And there you go. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. As I always tell people, and I said this on the 10th anniversary show, because I get it from time to time. Hey, man, I'm thinking about getting into the podcasting game. And this ties into the whole Jericho being a self-made man, you know, Mm -hmm. and everything. It's like, you know, I want to get into the podcasting business and I just don't know, like, where to start. and, And what's the number one piece of advice you could give to an aspiring podcaster? Be in it for the long haul. There's so many questions that like, as far as answers, uh, like what's Mm -hmm. one of the first things that comes to my mind? It it depends because one day I could say to you just right now, I could say, hey, be in it for the long haul. Or I could come at you and say, don't expect to get money overnight because that's not how it's. Nope. Right. But usually those are one of the first three things that will come out of my mouth when I tell an aspiring podcaster. But I definitely would have to say, like, if I had to choose a number one, be willing to invest in the long haul because. And invest in yourself. Yes. And be genuine. Yeah. Um, Because. Those people who want to hear you, who are investing in your podcast and your videos or whatever have you, what you're putting out, they're investing in you. Yeah. And that is what's bringing people and then people telling people and what have you. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, it just depends on the day you catch me. But that's usually one of the first three things that I say and to see and, and hear what Jericho's been able to do 
Right. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a guy that is just all over the freaking place. And like I said in my reviews, you just you got to respect that. That's yeah. that's that's absolutely. I like being gravitated towards people like that because my whole thing is whatever you got going on, that or of yours. I need to latch on to just that. some of that. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I, I want to bring my energy level. I want to bring my aura up to that mm-hmm. level, you know, something mm-hmm. else that I have found pretty interesting. There were a number of people I had spoke to uh, past couple of days and uh, I even read up on some of their experiences, but big event was mm. over the weekend big event in New York City at the LaGuardia Airport. Now, here's the thing. Some people and I get it. I get it. It's 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 kind of silly to think this, but I get it. When you say, "Oh, big event." And you're like, "What the hell is a big event?" Oh, it's a wrestling convention and basically fans they can come and meet a whole boatload of wrestlers. Oh, okay, cool. And it's in New York. Like, yeah, it's in, it's in New York City, basically. Yeah. It's, it's at the LaGuardia airport. Oh, they're actually doing it at an airport. And it's kind of like, dude, when have you ever known? <laughs> I just can't help. Some people actually thought this and I'm going, when the hell have you actually seen some type of a convention, a paying convention in an airport at an airport? I've, I've, it's probably a convention center that's near the airport or an ho- or a hotel. And that's how it had to be explained to some of these people. And they just <laughs> kind of were like, Edith Bunker, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you know, it's kind of one of those type of deals. It's like, Hello, McFly. Um, but so big event was over the weekend. And this was something that I had been paying attention to for a, a couple of months to the point. I actually thought this event was going to be in December, but I somehow I don't know. I don't know what the hell was going on, but turns out it was actually in November, November uh, 13th and the 14th. Mm-hmm. So even if I wanted to go on such short notice of a turnaround at that, it was just, uh, and then the prices, because the only guy I was even interested in seeing, honestly, was Daniel Bryan. That's the guy I actually wanted to see. There was actually a, quite a few people. I wanted to see JBL. I wanted to see Ron Simmons. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Daniel, Hart. Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, Bret Hart. And that pretty much was it. Mm -hmm. But then it was, okay. well, if, if, if who's the one guy, but I'm preparing myself for December. By the time I realized, oh, shit, it's in November. It was that weekend. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it until about maybe three days out that, oh, shit, it's this weekend. But but I reached out to some people. And I told him straight up, I said, hey, look, my name's Lee Sanders. I'm a columnist and reporter for the 411 Mania website. I also do a podcast. You know, I don't really see that much coverage for big event. I'd like to know your thoughts, you know, good, bad and different. You could tell me this anonymously. I just want to try to get some type of a report up and everything. And some of the people took me up on it. They told me straight up off the record, you know, pros and cons. And you had other people that were just like, nah, here, check out what I posted on Facebook. That pretty much will let you know. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And they were like, you know, if you want to credit me, you know, you can do that. No problem. And uh, the overall consensus of big event um it's 50 50 and that's not good 50 mm. it's 50 50 and that's not good let's deal with the positives the positives being really only one number one positive which is the fans that were able to come to this they were able to meet their favorite wrestlers they had a great time interacting with them nobody had anything negative to say about the wrestlers that they were able to meet so mm. oh, that, that's a positive that great fan at least celebrity yeah, interaction experience exactly at least they pretty much got what they came for exactly now let's deal with the negatives oh also location location for the most part 
uh, okay. when I, when, because it's just off of the airport. Oh, for, yeah. So anybody that, especially for the celebrities that were in attendance, because they fly in, right, go real right, quick, right, fly back out. Right. And see, that was very critical for some of the AEW towns because when full gear was over, mm-hmm. unfortunately, those talents that were supposed to be at big event the next day, they didn't get no sleep. They immediately oh, wow. went on that freaking airplane right to freaking LaGuardia. And if they were lucky, maybe, just maybe, they were able to get in a quick hour, maybe two hours of sleep if they were lucky. Oh, wow. But yeah, they pretty much were nonstop going to LaGuardia Airport and all that. So for the celebrities, it's really good because, okay, you've done what you needed to do. You've met your uh, personal obligations, media, appearance-wise. Now you can just pretty much get your little carrying bag and just walk on across the street, basically. You know, because it's a short walk to the freaking airport. Like, just boom, go do your thing. Mm -hmm. So, look, the negatives... The venue that they had used for this one. Okay. The hotel where they were at different from the one that they've been using many times in the previous years as that one had more space. And this one, everybody was just so crammed in and as far as yes. And okay. We're in this whole fucking COVID world right now. And then let's not also forget New York. They've got their own set of COVID rules and everything of COVID protocols Mm -hmm. and all of that. So the hotel is making sure that these in compliance with the state of New York are being met and everything. But from those I've spoke to and from what people were saying, you know, people were crammed like fucking sardines. They were not respecting each other's space. And it was just, what the fuck? Now, one thing I did not talk about on the Monday shows, which was this, and this came from not only men, this came from a lot of women, because there were actually a decent amount of women that went to this event. And they all said, yo, it's fucking foul that the men, it was because it was pretty much men that were at this event do not know a thing or two about bathing. Oh, Lord. Yes. And I mean, I was quite taken back by that. I really was because I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. So we got these cram spaces. People are funky as people. Okay. That just, I, I don't understand that. I mean, to each its own. If I'm going to a grocery store, you know, I'm, I'm going like right around the corner. Oh, okay. I, I don't really feel like washing my balls. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. If hell, I'm getting ready to go to work. I haven't had a shower in like three days. Okay. Well, you know what? Before I go to work, if I don't feel like getting in the shower, okay. I'm going to take a rag. We all have done it. Take a rag, wash under your arms, wash your crotch, get that ass. You know, put some cologne or perfume on, head out the fucking door. It is what it is, right? But yeah, I'm going to meet this celebrity. Mm. I'm going to meet this person that I've been, you know, a fan of for so many years, blah, this, blah, that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you telling me you can't treat them as if it's your first time on a date with somebody and you can't go the whole nine yards and, and wash up. You can't at least take a rag and soap at the sink and make sure your shit is on point. You going to show up funky. Mm. That right there for me is just mind boggling. Let me tell you something. When we, when we, when we did that cruise, going back to that cruise, let me tell you something. All the people that we pretty much came across, I can't speak on behalf of Tams, but I can definitely speak on behalf of myself. And that's majority of the people I bumped into, rode the elevators with, sat next to, walking up and down the stairs with, eating kind of within the vicinity of Mm -hmm. no hygiene problems. Nope. No fucking hygiene problems. No. And these weren't no uppity motherfuckers. These were, you know. People who cared about their appearance and about themselves. Yes. And, you know, how they were presented. Right. 
whether they were overweight, whether they were obese, whether they were these, skinny, mini, you mo- know, these motherfuckers represented. Matter. These motherfuckers represented. Yeah. These motherfuckers represented. So I just don't yeah. understand how you can come to an event like this and pay that kind of money. Because let's be honest, and that was, which brings me to the other point. A lot of people were complaining about the prices Mm -hmm. to the point, to the point. I didn't talk about this on Monday and I got to give a shout out to uh, my amigo and uh, DT, Don Tony. I had no idea about these fucking prices because I actually was on top over the weekend of how many pictures people were posting online of themselves and the different celebrities that they met. And, you know, it was really weird because I didn't see that many pictures floating around. And I saw those that were obviously super fanatics. And you kind of know how my brain works. If you show me a fan, the same fan. Hey, look, I did this with Ron Simmons. I did this with JBL. Hey, look, I ran into April Hunter. Hey, look, I ran into Medusa. Hey, look, I ran into, you know what I'm saying in my mind? Cha-ching. Yep. Cha-ching. Uh-huh. Cha-ching. Uh-huh. Cha-ching. Uh-huh. All right. Like, oh, yeah, I see money. So I'm paying very close attention to what's going on with AJ Lee, AJ Brooks, AJ Mendez, wife of CM Punk. And for very good reason, because of all the prices, hers was the most ridiculous Right. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's Interesting. let's dive into this. And you guys that are interested, you can see this for yourself. Uh, this is under glamour under the stars, glamour under the stars. These guys were representing AJ Mendez. Oh, yeah. LaGuardia, the LaGuardia, LaGuardia Marriott. Right. For the big event. And I got to tell you, um, it's definitely no fault to AJ Mendez and it's definitely no fault to the other talents that were at big event. But these people that basically were representing them, some of these prices, they were straight up highway fucking robbery as far as I'm concerned. Now, check this out. So they say, you know, thank you to everyone for purchasing uh, coming. And, and coming uh, to see AJ Mendez and all that. Right. But balls on these guys they still left their information on here and i agree with dt these guys came off like fucking assholes because i remember uh going into our respected monday night shows i actually dm'd him in the day and i said dude i said what have you been hearing about big event because i told him i said look this is kind of what i've been hearing so far you know what, what what are you and you know usually he's pretty you know, he, he gets bombarded with messages as it is. So I, I, I'm sure he saw what I said, but he probably didn't want to, you know, cause he kind of, I don't know, whatever. I'm only speculating, but nothing but love, but check this out. This is AJ Lee's drink. This is so, I mean, if this doesn't make you say, you know what, again, no shade at AJ, but if this doesn't make you go, yeah, you know what? Fuck you. I'm not interested. Right. Just listen to this. You must have an admission ticket to big event in order to meet AJ Mendez. Okay, well, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Okay, and Collectors Expo, LLC, DBA, Glamour, Under the Stars, and Sor- Sorrentillo Promotions presents AJ Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three times WWE Divas Champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First post WWE Wrestling Convention. Okay. First convention in six years. Okay. Second time working with Glamour Under the Stars since Rhode Island Comic Con. Okay. Rules and procedure for this rare public signing with AJ Mendez. You must have an admission ticket to big event. Well, you just like already said that. that, So that's like a no brainer, dude. Come on. How else are you going to get in there? Format of signing. Two hour signing station from 10 to 12 p.m. and a one hour professional posted uh posed photo of uh ah, god that's a tongue twister the way they got that worded in there let me try that again two hour signing station from 10 a.m to noon and a one hour professional photo op station includes on-site 8 by 10 print 12 15 to 1 15 p.m 
Mm-hmm. No selfies during the signing. If attempted, will be thrown out of the event with no refunds from Glamour Under the Stars, Sorrentino Promotions, or Big Event New York as a whole. I mean, that is some fucked up shit. Because I remember when I was on the Jericho Cruise, and I've done it off and on over the years, where if I'm in line, I'm waiting to see somebody or whatever. I usually like to get in a a nice little pick or two right before it's my turn to have that photo op with them and everything. And can you just imagine, oh man, let me just get this so I can share this on Twitter real quick or, yeah, let me do a quick photo bomb so people know what I'm getting ready to go do right here and everything. And yeah, nah, we catch you doing some form of a selfie. We were just going to kick your ass. That's some hardcore shit. It's like, well, wait a minute now. I don't already paid. <laughs> wait till we get to the price for AJ. But it's like, I don't already drop money for big event. I don't already drop money for AJ Lee. Mm-hmm. I don't already drop money for, and you're telling me that if I, but, but wait, 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 it gets worse. Hey, hold that thought. It gets worse. No combos being sold. No individual autograph tickets being sold. Now, I just find that to be baffling because you're missing out to make even more revenue as far as I'm concerned. But no inscriptions, no personalizations. And again, this goes back to how much these people are commanding for AJ. If you want to get her shit, it's like, okay, so wait a minute. All right. Some of these motherfuckers have probably taken an airplane of some type from another state or, or, or maybe they're coming from the West Coast. I don't know, but they, they've already Either done. Either way, they've right? paid to get there. They've paid to get they've there. Paid they've paid to for the stay hotel. Yeah, uh-huh. in the area. In the area, uh-huh. And then they've paid for to essentially event. meet you. Right, for big event. They've already paid for, for big event. For big event. They paid for the talent. Right. And so all of that that they've already paid for uh-huh, and uh-huh. you're going to talk about no self. Right. Right. No, no not, and not just that, but no inscriptions, no personalizations. Right. OK, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the punchline. Here's the punchline. Oh Tickets my. are as follows. No substitutions or changes Two autographs for three hundred dollars. Two autographs. Think about that. Two eight by tens. And you can't even personalize it. You cannot personalize it. You have two photos that she basically signed. Right. For you. Right. No inscriptions, no personalizations. Wait a minute. I just want one. Sorry, my ninja. I can't help you. You either take two autographs or hit the bricks, pal. Right. Hang on. Gets worse. Four autographs for $500. VIP package limited to 10 and first 10 in line. Four autographs and Diva's belt. $1,000. So that means that those 10 people, she just made $10,000. Yes. Personalized. Besides the other. Uh Uh-huh. Personalized photo op photos. I am saying that right. Personalized photo op photos. $150. No autograph included. Wow. Includes 8x10 print on site and digital version. Autographs is our 8x10 or your personal item. Nothing inappropriate. Hang on, it gets worse, people. Gets even worse, believe it or not. Photo op station, professional posed photo op and printed. You may also use your cell phone, camera, no selfies. A staff member will take your picture. Please have your cameras ready to keep the line moving. Please make sure if you're using a phone or camera that batteries are charged. Any shutter delays, we will not be able to take the picture. No guarantee on walk up or standby customers. Thank you for your understanding and patience. And we hope to see you at blah, blah, blah. No refunds, no refunds, no exchanges. You know what? Fuck you. 
Fuck, fuck, fuck you. That is a lot of money. So if you just say the person paid for both, that is $450 Mm -hmm. for an autograph, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, two autographs Mm -hmm. and a photo with that person. Mm -hmm. And that, mind you, is one person. Not among the remaining people that you may want to see while you're there. Mm-hmm. Oof. That. I can see 100 to 150 for the photo op. It's a little pricey, mm-hmm. but I can see it. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> yeah, that three hundred dollars for the autograph is crazy. That is just I mean, just all of these goddamn restrictions and can't do this, don't do that. And, and By I'm the way, sorry. you know, it comes off very it, it, like like some form of a like a dictatorship kind of like whoever did this shit needs to be fucking fired like don't work with them again okay because this is bullshit like the way this comes off to me as a fan heaven forbid i'm in the line because they say right here my phone dies well no 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 (laughs) it says right here lineup starts at 8 a.m which brings me to this point another wow another complaint before which brings me to this point which was another complaint that a lot of people had between Saturday and Sunday, okay. the long wait lines. Mm-hmm. They said Saturday was pretty bad. One guy I spoke to, he said, Lee, I'm, I'm telling you straight up, dog, I was able to get what I wanted on Saturday, but all the hustling I had to do, the freaking waiting mm-hmm. I had to do, I was just so drained. I was supposed to do Sunday. I just said, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm not interested. Wow. And Sunday was very bad. We thought waiting in the cruise line was bad. Motherfuckers were waiting that same length. They were waiting four hours, some five, some even six fucking hours in line just to get inside the fucking wow. joints. Yes. And this was also because there was poor, there was poor communication, communication between the hotel and big event because it turns out there were other events that were not wrestling related that was going In on the same at this time. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. And you would have thought that like with a guy like Ric Flair, for example, okay, Ric Flair has his own exclusive floor and he's he's over here away from the generalized Mm -hmm. area where you got, you know, everybody, Everybody all the celebrities that's right here. No, they had everybody in basically the same fucking area, the same fucking ground floor area. And it's like, yeah, what the fuck? You also had rude ass customer service uh, mm. the, uh, agents that pretty much, you know, oh, hey, ma'am, excuse me. Da, 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 da. They're being yelled at like they're a little kid. And they're like, well, ma'am, yeah, I was told by another staff member that sharply they're being cut off. And I mean, so all of that. And you expect these people to pay these prices. <laughs> now, let me go back to the point I was making earlier before you jump back in. I was curious to see if anybody. Did anything with AJ. Hey, if it's somewhere, I ain't seen it yet. I've seen everything from the weekend from practically everybody. I ain't seen nothing on AJ. What, they didn't didn't share? All of a sudden their cameras don't work? How do you explain that? I can't imagine. Hold on. How do you explain that? How do, you, how do you explain the fact that I, I, ain't, I ain't seen nothing on AJ? Like mm, oh, Not even one. I mean, I'm sorry, but if I took, if I paid that amount. You might as well post it. Right. I mean, as soon as I'm done, I'm like, look who I was with. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see. So how do you explain that? I don't know. Now, for me. In reference to, you know, just the way that I'm thinking about it. You haven't been on TV for shit, five years, at least. 
but she's still white no, 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 hot popular. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. you're bringing up a point. Yes. But just a point. To your question, yes. Five years. Five, six years. Yeah, in the wrestling ring. Now, grant you, yes. Has she been doing other things? Yes. Is she getting ready to come back in some form uh, to wrestling? Yes. Yes. And she wow. Is. And wow. And yeah. wow. Yeah. Correct. So, why in the world? I mean, yes, she. you're white hot. And possibly you could command that. But what? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I have a, pro- to be honest with you, I have a problem with the prices. I think they are way too fucking high, especially when you have five to 10 to possibly 15 other people that are in the same big event. Mm-hmm. So, and then you've got them waiting for four to five hours right. per person. Right. Oh, no. Let me tell you something. So, when we did what we did with the cruise. Now, Grant, you, I had a really short night the night before. And I did. I was, I was dead ass tired. I was. But there was some form of excitement. And, you know, this was Lee's first cruise and first flight and making sure that everything went off okay. But. That four hours was the most excruciating, annoying, almost ang- being angry at the process to almost not want to do it again because of the process. To have to do that per person? Oh, no. Yeah. You know, and, and God bless Norwegian for saying hey we recognize this and damn we fucked up mm-hmm. here's some compensation mm-hmm. and let me tell you something that was right on time mm-hmm. so it made our cruise more enjoyable it made the four hours and a half or four four hours that we were getting through that manageable but to basically say here fuck you pay me and let me put you with some raggedy ass stinky funky ass people and make you wait in this lovely line where i can't do nothing with my phone as far as any selfies and anything Mm -hmm. you know i they didn't poorly, even, poorly, poorly managed. They didn't even separate the lines from some of the people that I uh, was speaking to. They didn't even separate to. the lines they, from the talent? I mean, from the listen, talent? Listen, listen, listen. They didn't even separate the lines. Like, you know how at Awesome Kind, okay, my, yeah. v, my, hey, listen, listen. Mm-hmm. You know how you're at Awesome Kind. Hey, my VIPs, you're right here. Uh, Green color, you're right here. Yes. Red, you're right here. They didn't even do that. It Ooh. was just one line. They should have at least separated the VIPs from the normal people yeah. for as much money as they paid. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Why would, why would one, you know, asking the question, why would one pay that kind of money besides, you know, it's a couple of extra perks that you get. Okay. But majority of the time, those people pay the money because they don't have to fucking wait in the line. Exactly. Exactly. And be in and out and done and on to the next one. Yeah. That that was poorly managed. And and I think that's actually something that's going to be a reoccurring theme for some of these bigger conventions, uh, things that are happening, because this is truly the first time back from COVID. And yeah, blue- but you know oh, wait what? No, no, wait a minute now. The blueprint that they had prior to COVID is not the same blueprint you can use after COVID. It just feels to me sometimes. Oh well, you know, you know, COVID, and I mean, we're we're just trying to figure our way through this, and all. It just sometimes <laughs> comes off like a crock of bullshit. Okay, well, that's that could be too. That could be too because you've had eighteen months to prepare for any situation 
but still, I mean, grant you part of it's COVID. Okay, I get that. But 80% is you didn't plan well enough. And you tried to do the same thing. It just didn't work. And I'm sorry, but those employees at Marriott should be fired. Because you have people who are coming into your establishment and wanting help because you are actually providing the the space for this event. And you're going to give me some shit poor customer service? Oh, no. Look, myself and Lee, both in different aspects, work in the customer service industry. Everybody does, really. Um, For the most part, if you're dealing with some form of people coming up to you for service. And if... I'm coming up to you with a need and you're basically telling me to fuck off. I'm not coming back. And how many of us go to New York on a one to once to two to three times a year in general? Majority of the people who live on the eastern coast Mm. do. So I'm not, I'm definitely not coming back to, to be there if you're going to treat me like that. So any future business, number one, but either way, it was just and that's poorly what, managed. And that's what, and that's how those I spoke to off the record, that's how they felt. Some said, you know, this was my first time. Um, I'm big on impressions. I, I you know, I don't think I'm going to be going to another one of these uh, other people yeah. willing to give it another chance, but need to see things get tightened up. You know, and I've, you know, this Tam will tell you, I've, I've had my eye on big event for for, a couple of years, years, for some years to the point I always show them love and I mention them on the show, the lineup Mm -hmm. that they have and everything for Mm -hmm. each year. I just did some math while I was listening to you and look, just stop and think about this for a second. $150 for AJ's photograph, right? You want to do the photo op. Mm-hmm. That's one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. So, oh man, I really want her autograph too, but I want only one autograph. Can't I just pay one nope. hundred fifty dollars and just, well, you know, look? Can't you just take? No, no, no. It's got to be two autographs. So three hundred dollars. So there is four hundred and fifty dollars right there. Mm-hmm. Now l- let's let's think about that one thousand dollar package deal, right? So basically, we're talking. For autographs. Well, I've already done the math. If AJ Lee is charging, uh, what is it? If AJ Lee is charging, uh, 150 or 300. Hang, hang on, hang on. Yeah, $300 for two autographs. Then that means that essentially it's like 150. Yep. Uh, an autograph per basically per mm-hmm. autograph. So you're walking away with four autograph AJ Lee picks. And a four hundred dollar belt. I hope that so belt looks pretty. So that's eight hundred dollars. No, four hundred dollar belt. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, uh, yeah, I was only looking at that oh, okay. that that one thousand oh, dollar package. Yeah, I was only looking at that as an exclusive. Oh, okay. uh, in its respective gotcha. tier, because I was trying to figure out the math. So it's like, yeah, one hundred fifty dollars for the uh, for the autographs. So that comes to six hundred dollars, and then the remaining four hundred is on the belt, which you, you hope would look good, and that's how you got your thousand dollars right there. And apparently, that's only limited to uh, ten people, basically. Now, now to what you alluded to earlier. Now, I love this math we're doing, by the way. Oh man. I would love it if I could be one of the people that gets that belt and blah, blah, blah. And, and well, wait a minute, wait a minute, four autographs and a belt. Uh Uh-huh. Where's the photo op not included. So wait a minute. That's stupid. Wait a minute. Well, what if I want to get a photo op with AJ Lee? Then that's $1,150. That's a, that's, that's $150. Right. So that's a thousand fifty. Oh, it's that $1,150 Correct. that you would have. So this is just so poorly fucking for, for that. Th- th- mm, no, 
Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> but let's let's go in a sim a similar direction. But okay, say you know what? Just say everybody's that that much. You want to just say you want to meet six people at one hundred and fifty dollars a pop. Just say that's nine hundred dollars on top of your flight, your stay, what you're going to eat, and everything else. Mm. That's, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, and, and you and those are just autographs. Those might not even be photo ops. So, you know what that you know what with what you're saying, what I feel. Three words: money, cash, grab. I thought you were about to say money, cash, hoes. <laughs> I was about to say, what you know about that song? <laughs> money, cash, money, cash, hoes. What? Money, cash, money, cash, hoes. Uh, money, cash, money, cash, hoes. Uh, money, cash. Doom, 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 doom. D M X and my dog's bite. Jigger, my nigga, rhyme all night. <laughs> I do actually know the song. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh shit damn Whew, that's a good one so uh, I'm seeing a little bit of breaking news going on right now it's obviously a continuing story as far as his development goes but it looks like a rapper by the name of Young Dolph was shot and killed in Memphis according to police uh, I will try to see what I can learn a lot more um, on that and definitely uh, share my thoughts on the whole situation. But again, that's a early, early development. But that's uh, from what I had saw right before we went on the air has shocked a lot of people uh, so far. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be so quick to rush to. I will tell you something. Mm. Quick side note. Mm. I had a picture in my mind of what Elvis and as his Graceland would look. I, I know that that Memphis, is a hard one. Maybe. Memphis. Man. Oh, Memphis. okay. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Damn. So in reference to what I thought I got there and let me tell you something it's not what I pictured because once you get past the lights of everything Elvis whatever have you BB King's restaurants and, and, and Beale Street and all that the other areas of that town is rural it's very rural, meaning you have graffiti, meaning you have, you know, not such nice areas in, in that, you know, crime, things of that nature. Um, and it, it just is, is, can be, you know, a rough area in some parts of Memphis. Mm, okay. I thought for sure the direction you were going for was <laughs> racist. No. Nope. Wow. No, I, it just in reference to the picture that I had in my mind when I first, and that was over 10 years ago, probably 15, 16 by now, but, you know, going there and expecting something and then seeing something else was, was quite eye opening. Hmm. Um, just kind of an interesting side, okay. side sidebar. Okay. Well, we definitely want to make sure because I was getting ready to make this point, definitely want to send my thoughts, uh, prayers yeah. and condolences to the family, family. there uh, of that of that young man. Because from what I researched, it seemed as though he had a very promising career and he was really just starting to scratch the surface. So I know a lot of us want to try to race to conclusions and let's just get as much information that can be released to the public first facts cold hard facts and let's try to go from there folks uh lighten up the mood just a little bit for you guys that's in the uk and i know a lot of you guys that listen to the show are over in the uk i see it all the time when you guys pop up during the live streams 
If you are an Amazon customer, peep out this news as millions of Amazon customers are going to be able or not going to be able to make payments next year after Amazon has decided to ban Visa credit cards in the UK. There was an email that was sent to customers from Amazon saying it's an official email. So you guys that think uh, this is some type of a spam thing. No, it, it's legit. As Amazon is saying, it would no longer accept Visa cards due to the high fees. Oh, wow. Visa charges for processing transactions. This ban will go into effect on January 19th. Merry Christmas hmm. and Happy New Year. Well, at least I gave you two through Christmas. Yeah, yeah. But seriously. wow. Yeah. Well, that's another little bit of a sidebar as, you know, Lee was talking about with Amazon. Um, a lot of your money processing apps like Cash App, like Zelle, um, after the beginning of the year, they will actually start taxing that. So just kind of beware. And that's unfortunately not just in the, that's not just UK, that's everywhere. So be very mindful of, of transfers and paying through that. For you guys that are big on Disney cruises, all things Disney, Disney brought out some news that in mm -hmm. regards to the Disney cruise, they're going to start requiring children ages five and up to have had their COVID-19 vaccinations. So that may piss some of you guys off. That may not. The way I look at it, I look at it as a safety precaution and if you are saying whoa my kids I'm, I'm, my, my kids are essentially being forced to be vaccinated just to get on this cruise what the fuck look hear me out i hear your frustration because you know look it's, it's one thing if you're the adult and you're being told hey if you want to do this then you got to do then it's like okay well you know what if i decide i don't want to do this i don't want to get these shots then obviously i'm not gonna be able to go here or i'm not gonna be able to travel okay whatever it is what it is but to you know we're we're i'm really really this is probably one of the few things that i'm not really liking about this whole phase of the pandemic not right now now that we got these vaccinations that's out and everything i don't like seeing stuff like this where granted kids as the studies have shown have been more uh i guess the word is receptible to getting covid they've, they've been more the studies have shown that kids have been oh the numbers are higher the numbers for them for, than to... the adults yeah it's it's, well, it's slowly it's slowly starting to yeah so i mean as a parent i'm I, if i were a parent and i read this i can see both sides of the coin is the point that i'm making mm -hmm. on the one side i can see hey wait for disney to stand up they're just making sure that everybody's okay mm -hmm. safety wise and health they're just but i could see that other side of the coin and i can understand that parent that is saying what the fuck? Especially, what do you say to that family that has spent so much time and money on all things Disney, Disney World, Disney Cruises, you name it, and they get this message and they're now in, in what's honestly a very difficult position where they may have to go on the defense and say, no, fuck you. You're not going to tell me basically How and what i'm gonna give my kids exactly that's the that's the whole point i'm making mm -hmm. i mean what's 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 your what's your take on, on on this well part of me is okay you know this is something that's a requirement you kind of already know the gist of of kids and the behaviors you know, they, especially on a cruise, they don't care. They're on a whim and, you know, kids are going to be kids and they're going to want to do, touch, see everything. So it's not like an adult who, okay, well, you know, I'm going to use my sleeve and I'm going to this and I'm going to that, you know, and the, the thought process for them 
is not quite there as it would be for us. Mm. You know, it's reactionary and that's it. So I, un, I as well can understand your point. Um, if I was a parent right now and I was getting ready to go on a Disney cruise and that was a mandate, I don't know. I I think I'd be torn. Yeah. Yeah. On, um, you know, but majority of them were probably going to have to be vaccinated anyway because of school. I don't know. That's just a, that's just but a very. But I feel that's really young. Yeah. And not just that, but we're talking about something that isn't government related. You understand what I'm saying? I do. You know, we're talking about luxury here. So in order for me to enjoy this, I, I like I, I want to make sure I'm really stressing this, people. You're talking to somebody. Actually, both of us, we are vaccinated. We've even well, I've gotten my booster yeah, just a couple of weeks ago. Tams is about to get her booster by the end of this month. So don't get it twisted. I'm just, you know how I like to do with the other shows. I like to look at all sides and how we all walk away afterwards. That's up to us. But so this is a very interesting talking point because, Mm -hmm. you know, when we're talking about our educational system, which we're paying taxes for and and all of Mm -hmm. that shit, it's, oh, okay. All right. You want to try to get the government involved and for the kids and say, hey, no, 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 you got to get vaccinated because, okay, you know, I can kind of because homeschool can only go but so far depending on the parents' education degrees and all that good stuff, right? And the validity, all that, no. all, all that. Yeah, you know, right? there's, that's there's a different systems topic. there. Right, mm-hmm. there, right. But, but, but it's more tedious is my point. Oh, yes, it's for sure. It's more tedious, and, sure. and, right? So you, you got that. But we're talking about leisure. Mm-hmm. Honestly, to my point, to my point, I mean, in retrospect, no bullshit. I thought it was kind of silly that we had to go through COVID tests to go on the Jericho cruise because my whole mindset was, okay, you know what? If you want to say to me, look, give us proof of your most recent COVID tests and you're good to go. We got to have that at least a couple of days before you come out here. Otherwise we're not going to allow you to get on board. And that's, and I did talk about in the review mm-hmm. how that was somehow relayed to us when we talked the sixth man, but that's mm-hmm. not what happened when we were there in person. Correct. I've already yeah, docu- I know. Yeah, I documented in the reviews, mm-hmm. but for me, I'm just saying, as far as the simplicity, look, just show us proof of a recent negative test. You're good to go. Okay. I can, I can, you know, if you want to go that route, Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Obviously, anybody that doesn't want to comply with taking a test, Mm -hmm. obviously somebody like that, you just need to eject them. They cannot come. But to those that are negative and it's like, okay, so now what? Okay, well, you can either wear a mask or since you're with all these other people, you got your negative test. Like, you know, with these kids and all this Mm -hmm. shit, it's like, why? I don't understand. Why not just, hey, just between now and blah, 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 blah. Just make sure you uh, get your COVID test. We see negative. You're good to go. I don't understand. What's, What's so hard about that? Well, actually, for me, as you were talking, why are we forcing a shot versus proof of a negative test because they're covering their ass basically because they don't want a black eye that someone went on this cruise that cruise whoever's cruise but that's what got waivers covid are for. but that's what waivers are for true hold on but that but still black eye because People don't care about the process. They just get the sensationalism of the event. Okay. Yeah. 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 So basically, you know, and they don't want a black eye. Oh, well, this person came on the boat and possibly had pre-existing conditions, got COVID and died. 
Just saying. Okay. Especially this child. Okay. Okay. And then, oh my God, it's, you know, I'm not going on a cruise and I, oh no, they have, you know, it's super spreaders or whatever you want to call it. Even as to Lee's point, you give them a waiver. Hell, you even give them a signed copy that says, if this person gets COVID, we're not liable because you didn't apply, um, comply with our guidelines. But in the media, with the five second thing, as soon as it's put out there, it's blown out of proportion and it's four different versions by the end of the week. Hmm. So... That then affects their bottom line Mm -hmm. because the funny thing is right before we went on, on the Jericho cruise, I don't know about three weeks, maybe even a month. I heard that there was a couple people on a carnival cruise that got COVID. Mm. I didn't tell you about that. Because I didn't want you freaking out. <laughs> so, so, and they kept it very low profile. Like, you might have heard it once, maybe twice, and that was it. Because that type of thing will, again, like I said, affect their bottom line because people will start staying away because of those type of things. And then it gets even more sensitive when it's a child. I don't know. know, But, but in the case of like us, if you want me to be honest, how I would have preferred, I should be able to give you my COVID vaccination. I've had both of my shots. Okay. Next two weeks or whatever. Then the booster's on there. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I'm completely good. I should, within 24 to 48 hours of me getting on that ship, stay low profile, get my test, bring my negative test with me, plus my vaccination card, and be able to get on the dang boat. Yeah. The testing right before you got on the ship... I felt was completely unnecessary. And a, and a certain, uh, I can't believe I'm using this word, but it, it kind of felt dirty and a violating. An invasion of privacy? And a violating yeah. kind of, it did, honestly. It did. It did. And and to be honest with you. You could justify it by saying, okay, look, um, you got this test, you got this test on you got tested on Monday. You got your results on Wednesday and your cruise is Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Go ahead. Pass. But right. like, but like if you didn't get the test, then I could understand. Okay. Well, you, you got to go, go, go over here. You got to go right. over here. I understand that part. I get that part. But my whole thing was while we were standing in line for that lovely four hours, how do you know how, some of these people don't already have COVID? I'm most curious how many, if any, you know, off that how, cruise. How do you know? Yeah. Cause I tell you what, as soon as we all got on that damn boat, what was the first thing that we were told? You oh, can take off your mask. You can take off your mask. You don't need it no more. And, you know, and even to that, it felt different. It did. Because of the past two years that we've, you know, yeah. been through. But, it just it, you know and and for kids I, I get the point i do but i i, I don't know i'm still kind of especially for for little kids like that mm. but the other catch 22 is is you really don't want them to have it you know so it's like you, you go on a family vacation and your child comes back with freaking covid so it's like, well, uh, okay, you know, and then, you know, prayerfully that everything's fine. It's maybe a couple of days of a fever and some body aches and, you know, it's nothing more than a really terrible flu. Right. But who wants to take that chance? 
especially with your child. Where does this stop? I mean, we've already seen comedians. We've already seen musical artists that have said, you know what, these COVID measures that's being forced on my respective fans, my respective followers. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not forcing this on them. It should be your choice on, you know, you already know the rules you followed, you followed the science, you know, you know, the pros and cons, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I get where some of these celebrities, musicians, I get where some of them are coming from and why they're pretty much putting their foot down and saying, no, you know, this is, this should be their choice. They should not be forced to, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can see that side of the coin, but then there's also the side of the coin where I say, so what What do we do? Is this a case right here where people that are vaccinated and unvaccinated that they need to be sitting next to each other? I, I don't really think so. You know, you, you're going to have to put in some type of special seating arrangements that's already in place with uh, a lot of these venues. You go on Ticketmaster, StubHub, wow. and, and you can see that they've got COVID-19 proof of vaccination seats. And then those that aren't <laughs> vaccinated, you wow. know, I mean, it, it, segregation yeah. by yeah. by a vaccine. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, isn't that interesting? I, I don't know. You know, it's again, it's, where does it end? Until <laughs> someone puts a stop to it, it won't. Mm. But in looking at it as a whole, there's so many different scenarios and situations. And at this point, you've got it under control. So is it really worth continuing to make so many uh, determinations, man- mandates, and all of that when... Okay, so you have one person get sick. You have another person get sick, you know, from from something. But it's no it's no more some for some people than the flu. Some people, yes, it's worse for. I you know, it's really it's 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 really hard to tell. Because it's it's almost one of those two sides of the coin. You be damned if you do, and you be damned if you don't. Yeah, yeah, indeed, really, indeed. Shout out to our sponsors. Appreciate them tremendously. I want to make sure we give them a proper shout out too, because uh, normally I just leave it at that. But it's actually been a good minute since I've actually done some dry plugging. Uh, As usually, we already got the audio slipped in where we're doing the plugs and all that. First off, I want to give a mad shout out to my boy, Screaming Bullseye One. Get a him on social media. If you need the hookup as far as wrestling bus goes, wrestling sculptures, he's the man. Show him some love. He is a phenomenal sculptor. And his prices are pretty affordable. So check him out. Also, I want to give a <clears throat> I want to give a special shout out to the good kind of people over there at sturdiesamenities.com, where Sturdy's Amenities, they are a online car accessory shop where you can buy all your favorite car necessities, such as jump starters, headrests. Bluetooth music adapters and so much more. Check out their website, sturdiesamenities.com. That's spelled S T U R D I E S and then amenities, sturdiesamenities.com. Also, something to think about in regards to financial coverage, whether it's you or a loved one or struggling with funeral expenses you've already done your research you have reached out to a few companies and you found they just weren't to your liking maybe you try to see if you could tap into some of those services and you ultimately were denied well you got a really good affordable insurance alternative with guaranteed approval if you want to learn more information call or text 800 
800-509-2939. That's 800-509-2939. Call or text, learn more information. Better peace of mind as some benefits include basic funeral costs, basic casket or urn, body transport to coverage area, round trip airline ticket to funeral, free last will and testament. Check them out. Give yourself and your loved ones a better peace of mind. Shout out to our Patreon familia as well. Love those guys. And at this point, we had a couple of more topics that we could have gotten into, but she's ready to cook. <laughs> I'm definitely ready to eat. I'm ready to hit my cigar. Oh, Lord. Yes, I got two new cigars and I'm uh, I was supposed to have those on the cruise. So I will definitely be uh, puff, puff, puffing on those. But uh, there's some fun topics that we're going to be getting into on the next show. One of them, I'm surprised didn't make it on here because we were talking about it on the way in here and it didn't make it into the show. If we were to dive into it right now, it would be a nice, nice, good discussion that I think a lot of you guys would enjoy. But we're going to save that for the next show. So at this rate, November 17th, we know next week it's all about the Thanksgiving holidays. So we're not going to. We're not going to do that for you guys for next week. Uh, honestly, I'm thinking, if anything, maybe we'll sit down and record something after the Thanksgiving holiday. Maybe we'll do something that weekend. We'll just really depends what we're doing, for one, what exactly we're doing that weekend. But at the latest, we'll definitely get something out to you guys um, before the end of November, for sure. Because uh, I know at this point, it's like about... Psh, what it's like about 14 days away before we're we're done mm -hmm. with november basically mm -hmm. yeah so about like 14 days away so we'll hook you up we're definitely going to hook you up be kind rewind check out previous episodes you might have missed on demand and on the downloads wherever you get your podcasts twitter facebook instagram youtube use the keywords the rcwr show she's the beautiful and lovely tammy lee sanders here we wish you to be safe and most importantly be kind to one another we'll see you next go round adios and happy Thanksgiving. Yes. We are thankful for everyone here. Yes, 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 definitely. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, from our family to yours. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive. Thanks for listening to Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive.